Welcome back to the workshop, everybody. So glad you could be with me today. We have a special guest in the workshop today. His name is Mr. Rub. Mr. Rub is the workshop cat. And uh, may not be as good as a shop dog, but he's a shop cat. So I wanted to speak with you a little bit today about what tools are going to go with me over to the workshop and which ones are going to stay here. So for right now, I'm trying to decide how many saws I need. And one of the things that always irks me is People who say they're going out. You like that plane? <laughs> One of the, the people who go out and they say, I'm going to go practice cutting dovetails. All I have to say about practicing cutting dovetails is don't do it. Rather, Take a scrap piece of wood once every night and draw some lines on it. Eighth inch, three sixteenths, three eighths, half inch, quarter inch apart, I don't care. And then practice with your saws cutting to the line. Now, Old Faithful here, she's filed cross cut at nine points. So, on a rip cut, she's going to struggle. If I take a rip cut, filed even a little bit finer, let's see, make sure I got the right one here. This is the rip cut. If I take a rip cut, Not putting much pressure on it. It cuts pretty fast. I take a cross cut. It takes longer. It's all about the geometry of the teeth. The cross cuts are designed to act like knives cutting across the grain. The rips are designed to be chisels one after the other cutting through the grain. So, Instead of practicing cutting dovetails, you make yourself a bunch of lines. And then you practice cutting to the left side of the line, then practice cutting to the right side of the line, and practice cutting splitting the line. And if you're doing rip cuts, use a rip saw. If you're doing cross cuts, use a cross cut saw. But you can see the rip saw here did a much better job than either of my cross cut saws. So, Typically how I do my warm-ups. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't you know that like sports figures, like musicians, woodworkers need to do warm-ups? You take your saw, take a scrap piece, draw a bunch of lines, then practice cutting to the left of the line. Okay? Then practice cutting to the right of the line. Where are you going, Rob? 
Hmm? Then practice splitting the pencil line. Okay, so here's what you got. We practiced to the left of the line, to the right of the line, splitting the line. When you do a thousand cuts and they begin to come out to where you're just slightly to the left, slightly to the right, or right down the middle, now all you need to do is lay out your dovetails and cut them. There's no practicing cutting dovetails. I'm sorry, I don't practice cutting dovetails. You either do it or you don't. As far as laying them out, yeah, you can practice that. You can practice the geometry, the spacing and all that stuff. Yeah, practice that so you get to see what you like and what you don't like. But in all honesty, if you're cutting, let's say you're cutting tails first, you would just come in. I don't have a gauge right here, so I'm going to do it by eye. But you would come in and you draw yourself lines across the board that are square and then you would start your cut and then you would just angle it in and then you go to the next one and you angle it in okay there's no practicing those those are, those can be done by a blind man if you're doing pins first, you will want vertical lines, but no diagonals, and you would come in, and you're sawing to the vertical line. Okay? You're sawing to the vertical line. This one was off a little. So what's more important? Learning to saw to a line or learning to saw to a dovetail? I'm going to say this very clearly. I do not care what the joint is. Dovetail, box, Fancy interlocking Japanese dovetails and joinery and timber frames. I don't care. If you can draw it, you can cut it. But you have to practice the cutting. I know this isn't plain talk. But it all has to do with moving to the new shop. So... In addition to which, I have these four planes that are not going to go with me over to the new shop. They're brand new, crown planes, made by James White in Maine. <clears throat> the Crown Plane Company was founded by Leon Robbins of Maine, and Leon was sort of a pre-James Krenov plane maker. And he would saw off the cheeks and then he glue in these wedges and I, I don't even know how he did it, but they are a maple body with curly maple sides, tool steel, wedges, beautifully finished. I bought these for a chair making project that never got done. So I'm going to part with them. This is a fork staff plane. This is a small fork staff plane. And this is a chair maker's seat rounder. You round the seats out. 
with this. It's round in two directions, that way and that way. Also, curly maple on a maple body. So if you're interested in these planes, message me and we'll talk. But getting back to the topic here, I need to determine how many saws I'm going to have. And right now I'm leaning towards sending this one out and having it sharpened hybrid, rip and crosscut, but predominantly rip. Why? Well, ripping is the hardest task. Cross cutting is easy, but as you can see, cross cut teeth work extremely slow in ripping. Whereas ripping teeth work extremely fast in ripping and work extremely fast in cross cutting. The only thing is they're a little rougher. Okay? So if I had to live with one saw, it would be a rip saw. It leaves a little bit rougher cut. Can you see that? It's a little bit, a little bit rougher cut on the end grain compared to compared to a cross cut. So, if you plan your cuts well, that you can plane or pair off the cross cuts, it's a moot point, so you use a, use a rip tooth. So that's about it for today. Mr. Rub wants to go out, so I'm gonna let the kitty out. I'm glad you could meet him. Mr. Rub's a cool cat. Right, Mr. Rub? Oh, he's got his eyes closed. So, I hope you found something informational here in this video. If you did, or you at least found it entertaining, give it the old thumbs up. If you'd like to contact me, my contact information will be down, down there in the comment section. Any questions? Put them down there in the comments section. Or find the message button up somewhere. Send me a private message. In the meantime, head out to your shop. Go make some saw cuts or some shavings. Walter out.